Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When I say P.O.P., usually we think Prince of Peace, right? But today we may also think Peter or Paul. And why do I say that? Well, because the first reading for this Sunday deals with the conversion of Paul, his Damascus Road experience. And the Gospel reading, well, that deals with the recommissioning of Peter after he had fallen back into earlier patterns of trying to catch fish rather than people. Hmm. Well now, Peter and Paul are certainly familiar names when it comes to Christian leadership. They are pillars, pillars of the early church. So a P.O.P., that is Peter or Paul Sunday, I think that seems appropriate. But even more here, folks, I'm seeing today as a P.A.P. Sunday. And why is that? Well, because of Ananias. Ananias? Yes, Ananias. He's mentioned in our extended section of our first reading from Acts for today. Now, a few years ago at the New Jersey Synod Assembly, Pastor Scott Schatzenbach of the Bishop's staff lifted up Ananias as being one of the most important people in the work of the early church. Ananias is kind of a little like Frodo, Frodo from the Lord of the Rings. He's, he's a reminder that even the smallest person can change the course of the future. For that is what Ananias did. He received a vision from the Lord, direction from the Lord, and, and he overcame his fears, doing what the Lord had directed him to do. Indeed, it was no easy task that God gave to Ananias. He had heard who Paul then Saul was. He knew that this person was in Damascus to arrest Christians, and Ananias, being a Christian, knew that if he went to Saul, he himself might be imprisoned, or even worse. But Ananias overcame his fear. He was obedient to his call, and he unleashed the power of Jesus in the life of Saul, who became one of the most important leaders in the whole history, the whole history of the church. As we all know about Saul, who later became Paul, but were it not for Ananias, who knows? Who knows if any of us would have known about Paul, and more importantly, who knows if any of us would have known about Jesus? That's the real issue. Ananias reminds us today of the importance of looking to Jesus to overcome our fears and to complete the task that has been assigned to us. Ananias is a small person, but he found his courage in Christ to do something incredibly important and also extremely scary. You know, I think that this is a timely message. I say that because we live in a period of great change that can leave us all feeling very small at times. In the world, in this country, in our personal and family lives, in our faith communities, there, there are circumstances that can cause us to be afraid and sometimes even cause us to freeze, to freeze in fear. Well, Christ comes to us again today to, to bring the great thaw. I mean, it is spring now, isn't it? I think that we all know that doing something new also can be a bit scary. Perhaps we've all known some scary requests in our life as well. I mean, they may seem small at the time, but then they could turn out to have really big results. For example, who could have known that my second year of seminary, a, a slightly scary request from my seminary roommate, who happened to be named Peter, would have such big implications? He pushed me. He wanted me to ask this woman out on a date who became my wife. Lisa is her name. Now, that seemed a bit scary to me at the time because at the time I was planning to study in Germany in the next year, so I didn't want to get mixed up in any long-distance relationship, and very frankly, at a deeper level, I was just afraid. I was afraid of rejection. But roommate Peter prevailed, words that still live as holiday family legend. He said, come on, Doc, my nickname Doc Holiday. ask Lisa out on a date. It's not like you're going to marry her. <laughs> That's famous last words. 
we did get married, and though I didn't want a transatlantic relationship when I left to study in Germany, somehow, somehow it all worked out. Now, did my roommate Peter receive a word from God to, to convince me to ask Lisa out on a date? I, I don't know. Was God working through Peter? Perhaps. You know, though, I sure sense that God has been working through Lisa. And through Lisa, Jesus has helped me to get through some scary times, some sad times, and also a lot of good times, most of all. Yes, folks, it can be scary to do something new. I get that. Jesus gets that, too. But if we sense something is the right thing to do, even directed by Jesus, perhaps, perhaps the results won't be as scary as we imagine. Indeed, Jesus is the source of perfect love, and as Scripture tells us, perfect love casts out all fear. The more fear we feel, the more love we need, and Jesus knows that, too. That's why he makes himself available, available to help us. Indeed, brothers and sisters in Christ, just like Ananias, we as individuals, as members and friends of Prince of Peace, we have important jobs to do that can sometimes seem very scary. But folks, perhaps if we do not find a way to do our job, no one will. And that may be an even scarier thought than the task at hand. So Peter, Ananias, Paul, P-A-P Sunday in a way it may be that indeed. But it is also a Sunday for us and all followers of Jesus. And most importantly, it is a day that recognizes the, the power of Jesus, raising us up to continue the work in his name in this day too. Perhaps we cannot do big things, but we can do small things with great love. And folks, that can make all the difference, all the difference in the world. In the name of Jesus, the source of strength to overcome fear. Amen.